In this video, we will demonstrate how attacks targeted at an internet service provider's resolver may affect their customers and the services they use on the internet. The goal for the attacker is to redirect the client's future communication to a path where the attacker is able to eavesdrop or manipulate the transmission. The domain name system is a hierarchical distributed database. The resolver is a function which traverses this database on behalf of the client by following referrals and finally translate domain names into IP addresses. Every query is identified by a transaction ID. Queries can be responded to by either giving referrals to the next level in the hierarchy or by providing the final answer. To every response, there may be additional data attached to facilitate the traversal. To save on resources and to minimize latency, every relevant answer the resolver collects is cached in memory. The Kaminsky attack exploits this function to redirect the communication by inserting false data into the cache. This is called cache poisoning. The attack works by asking a query for a name in the domain to be manipulated. The resolver will in turn ask the authoritative name service the same query. While the query is unanswered, the attacker can try to spoof valid answers and attach the additional false data. The challenge for the attacker is to guess what transaction ID number the resolver used for the query. The chances of guessing the right number is approximately 1 out of 64,000 and the number of guesses the attacker is able to do during this time frame is dependent upon its computing power, the bandwidth and the response time of the authoritative name server. However, the attacker may repeat this whole procedure as many times as needed until he succeeds. A typical attack will take between 5 and 15 minutes. The next time a client asks for this particular name, the resolver will retrieve the data from the poisoned cache and provide the false information to the client. The attack is then a fact. In the first example in our demonstration, we will show how an attacker could manipulate the Swedish National Weather Forecast Service. The forecast is presented through a flash application, which in turn retrieves the weather data from a website. It is the communication to this server the attacker will want to steal. The attacker prepares by loading a configuration into an ordinary Apache web server. The web server is configured to act as a reverse proxy, where all communication is forwarded to the weather service, except requests for the weather data for Sweden. This piece of data is redirected to the attacker's web server. The attacker has prepared his own weather forecast data and publishes it. Then it checks the resolver to ensure that the IP address for the web server isn't already cached, which it isn't. This is a prerequisite for the attack. The latest version of the toolbox Metasploit is retrieved and started. Metasploit contains a module for exploitation of vulnerable resolvers. The module also has functionality for determining if the resolver is vulnerable for the attack, which it in this case is. Metasploit is configured with the necessary parameters and the attack is started. After a couple of minutes, the attack is completed. The attacker once again checks if the web server's IP address is stored in the resolver's cache. This time it is, and with the attacker's IP address bound to the name. A client using the poisoned resolver, when visiting the weather service, will now be provided the manipulated weather forecast. Apart from the weather data, the web service is completely authentic 
even though any content could have been modified by the attacker. Neither, there is no obvious way for the end user to tell if the information has been manipulated or not.